Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most chaste spouse of the Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto you, my spiritual Father, and beg your protection. O foster Father of the Redeemer, despise not my petitions, but in your goodness hear and answer me. Amen. Heavenly Father, on day 33 of our consecration to St. Joseph and the day that we consecrate ourselves to uh, our spiritual father, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon us. And we are grateful for this journey, for this time together to unpack the greatness of St. Joseph, to get to know him so that we can love him. So grateful for this time, Heavenly Father, and for all that you've done, for the many people who have participated. And for the many people who will watch it in the future as it's left on YouTube and, and Facebook for other people to participate in, pray that the whole world would be set aflame with this movement, that souls would want to draw close to St. Joseph in order to draw closer to Jesus Christ. And we ask you on this day when we make our consecration uh, to help us experience that joy of knowing that we are so loved, that we are going to be taken care of by the great Saint Joseph, who took care of your eternal son, Jesus, and who was the faithful husband and companion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our spiritual mother. We're so grateful, Father. Continue to pour out your graces upon us as we go through this day and give ourselves to Saint Joseph. As always, we ask all of this through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Day 33, guys. Wow, we did it. We did it. Tomorrow is the last day uh, because I'm going to do a follow-up. Today's the last day of the consecration for sure. So if you can't join tomorrow, I understand. You know, it was 33 days. But I wanted to do a follow-up tomorrow, same time, just for what now, Father? What do we do now? You know, we've done this. Uh, you're not going to be on the live stream anymore. So what do we do? So I'll offer some suggestions and things like that. And um, yeah, it'll be good. I, I, hopefully it'll be, it'll be helpful to you because you don't want this to be like um, something that's a one-time thing and then you let that fire burn out. That would be a big mistake. Or you let that relationship, you know, d dwindle or, 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 you know, that, that, that love uh, fade away. We don't want that to happen for sure. So I want to give the follow through swing and knock this thing out of the park to give you some ideas. And you can have your own, of course, but I'm going to offer some uh, that I've thought about. Some are in the book. There's actually a section called After the Consecration. So if you want to read that in anticipation for tomorrow, fantastic. Go ahead and do that. Uh, but even for those who don't have the book, I'll give you some follow-up. So, oh, this is the last day. This is, it's good, but it is sad, right? It is on some level. So we're on day 33. And uh, the title, it's not from the, the one of the invocations per se, with a particular title for today. It's the ending uh, of the prayers of the litany. And so we read, He made him the Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. So see, now, having done this, you know what we mean by calling St. Joseph Lord. doesn't mean that he's God, that he's divine, or the Messiah. Certainly not. Uh, but you know what it means now, right? And it's in the right sense. And you know what it means to he's the prince over all his possessions. And actually, here's a, here's a quote from Blessed Pope Pius IX, that gives us a little insight in, into that statement. He says, As Almighty God appointed Joseph, son of the patriarch Jacob, over all the land of Egypt to, to save grain for the people. So when the fullness of time was come, and he was about to send on earth his only begotten son, the Savior of the world, he chose another Joseph, of whom the first had been a type. And he made him the Lord and chief of his household and possessions, the guardian of his choicest treasures. That's the Joseph, that's our Joseph, our spiritual father. And by making this consecration today, you know, you're going to you're gonna reap so many things, really and truly. It doesn't mean that you're not going to continue to suffer in life and at some point you're not going to die and you're going to experience hardships. You are, right? That's, that's just part of this fallen world. But you now will have such a good father with you always, 24-7, every day of the year. He will never leave you. And that, my friends, that changes everything. That changes everything. 
So, our spiritual father, St. Joseph, is Lord, chief, and guardian of the treasures of heaven. Many saints believe that Jesus, this is epic, listen to this, guys. Many saints believe that Jesus referred to the greatness of St. Joseph in his preaching. How's that? It occurred when the mother of James and John asked Jesus if her sons could sit next to him in his kingdom. You know, I love those guys, but I, I, these apostles, I love these dudes. You know, they're, they're, they're bold dudes, man. They, you know, they, they go to our Lord trying to pull a fast one and be like, hey, you know, when, you, when you're up there, when you get in there, kind of, you know, get us in, you know, and get us some special seating. Uh, and then they, they, they get their mother to come over thinking that, you know, the, if we get mom to go, you know, push her ahead of us, we'll be standing right behind her. But we'll be like, here, you know, yeah, tell them, ask them this, um, that they can, you know, pull a fast one over on Jesus. Love it. Class, that's great stuff, man. So this is the passage from Matthew in the, where this episode takes place and where there's a, kind of an allusion to Joseph. Jesus doesn't say it. But let's think it through. Here's the passage. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached him with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, what do you wish? She answered him, command that these two sons of mine sit, one on your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? They said to him, we can. He replied, my cup you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. And by the way, I've got a quote on the back of the book that I think so applies to this whole situation. It's in a different passage, but it's, He that is lesser among you, he is the greater, from Luke. Hmm, that's interesting. Who's been the lesser among us for 2,000 years of Christianity? You're looking at him. You're looking at him. So let's unpack that passage from Matthew with the little, you know, switcheroo, the little, the little you know, motherly, you know, uh, kind of persuasion that was going on there from the mother of, of James and John. What are we to make of that statement that Jesus says? What persons has the Father prepared to, to sit next to Jesus in heaven? Obviously, you know, we, we are very clear that Mary, the mother of Jesus, sits on his right side. She is the queen mother in, the, in God's kingdom. And this is very biblical. This goes back to the, the ancient Israelites in what's called the Gebira. Don't have time to unpack the, all the theological stuff of the, that, that. But the person who sat on the right of the king and in the Israelite kingdom was not his wife. It was his mother, the queen mother, the Gebira is what the title is. And so that is simply a preparation for how the Virgin Mary would sit at, on the right of, of Jesus Christ in his kingdom. And we've got tons of artwork and, you know, all kinds of stuff. we got songs about this. We sing about this. You know, this is kind of a no brainer for us. It's, we know this because that's your mom. That's your mother. And, and, and if Christianity is the fulfillment of Judaism, well, there's not going to be anybody else at the right side of Jesus than the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's, that's obvious. But the question is, who's on his left? Who's on his left? So James and John, and actually the other apostles probably wanted it too. That's why they became indignant. They were like, dang it, they beat us to it. Where's my mom? I should have got my mom to go up there and ask. <laughs> You know, who knows, but probably. So who's on his left? Think it, think it through. Is it John the Baptist? Is it St. Francis of Assisi? Is it the little flower, St. Therese? Is it whatever you, you, saint you really love? And I mean, all saints are awesome. 
So if you imagine the kingdom of heaven, you've got Jesus on his throne. Mary is on his right, seated on his right. When we look at it, it would look like he, she's on his left, but that's because it's from the viewer perspective. On his right would be the Virgin Mary, the, the queen mother. Who's going to be on his left? Is Would he say to his spiritual father, the greatest saint after the Blessed Virgin Mary, greater than all the angels, than John the Baptist, Francis of Assisi, Teresa of you, you name them all. He's the greatest. Is he going to say to his dad, mm, sorry, dad, could you step aside? I need to put uh, Lawrence of Brindisi here. No. Even though Lawrence of Brindisi is awesome, got a crown himself, and is a saint, glorious in heaven now, along with the rest of them. My friends, ain't nobody else going to be seated on the left, immediate left of Jesus Christ, than St. Joseph, than the great St. Joseph. I mean, this is just kind of goes without saying. I mean, what, what kind of son would Jesus be if he downgraded his father and elevated a, a, a servant, right? Now, St. Joseph is a servant of God as well, of course, but it's unique. He served him as father. That is special. Here's a quote from uh, Blessed William Joseph Chaminade. And by the way, I have been quoting this guy consistently throughout this whole series. And do not forget that in the back of the book, there is, in my opinion, the greatest homily ever given on St. Joseph by Blessed William Joseph Chaminade. The entire thing is in one of the appendixes in the back of the book. That's where a lot of these quotes are coming from. You read that on your own in the future. That thing will stoke your fire. I mean, he is just amazing. So he says, it is a monstrous crime for a father to be poor while the son lives in abundance. Who could imagine that the son of God, who is the master of all virtues, would forget Joseph, whom he loved and cherished as his father? He, Jesus, must have spared no effort to enrich him. So we're talking about glory as well. The glory given to St. Joseph would far uh, exceed any glory than any other saint except the Blessed Virgin Mary in the kingdom of heaven. So how could he not be seated on the left side of Jesus? It's impossible that he wouldn't be. It's just impossible that he wouldn't be. So I just, it's, I just love it. So seated on the left of Jesus in the kingdom of heaven, St. Joseph dispenses all the treasures of heaven. Remember, he is the Lord and Prince of all the treasures of the kingdom of heaven. That's St. Joseph. That's not me, Father Calloway, making that up. That's in the litany of St. Joseph. That's what the church has us officially pray. There's no other saint that we say is the Lord, Master, Prince, whatever you want to call it, of all the treasures of heaven. No. We don't talk about this in reference to Our Lady and St. Joseph. You know, Mary is the mediatrix of all grace. St. Joseph is, in a certain sense, the dispenser of all grace. Wow. All the treasures of heaven. This, is, this has been so under-acknowledged, undervalued uh, in the last 2,000 years of Christianity that now's the time. Now's the time. When we've got a, a heightened battle going on, which I've been talking about, I'm not going to hammer on that issue again. And as I said, I think things are going to get a lot worse. We've now, we've, I think that the Holy Spirit is saying in light of the times, the difficulty, and how much more difficult it's going to get, you need to know who you can go to to get the extraordinary graces that you, you need. Because there may come a time, my friends, when you might have to stand before a firing squad and you're going to need to call out to heaven and you're, need, you're, going, to be, you're going to need to say, you know, St. Joseph, just like you know, the other day, it's a, it's a funny thing. I, mean, I don't know if I mentioned this on this series or not. It was posted on the Facebook page. Do you remember the movie, um, It's a Wonderful Life? It's one of my favorite movies. It's a great movie, classic movie. Uh, and there's the, uh, the angel, like the guardian angel of George Bailey. His name was Clarence Oddbody. That was his name, right, the, of his angel. Clarence Oddbody, angel second class, he says. So at one point, he's kind of being... Um, Bert and Ernie, you know, the police officers, right, in, in the movie, um, not from Sesame Street, although I think that's where it came from, uh, or well, that's where Sesame Street got it, I think, was from the movie. So Bert and Ernie, the police officers, they're wrestling with, with Clarence, the angel, and Clarence calls out, Joseph, oh, Joseph, and all of a sudden, Clarence disappears, and they're just shaking their hands, and then the other cop says, I, I need a drink, you know, 
Um, so we need to cry out to Joseph right now, the one who is in charge of all of the graces, just like the Joseph of the Old Testament was in charge of all the granaries of Egypt. Our Joseph is the Lord and, and Prince of all the treasures of heaven. That's what the church tells us. So we can invoke him in that now uh, for our particular situation, for your marriage, for your children who have abandoned the faith or whatever, or for, you know, whatever your situation is and whatever the future holds. Because as I said, and I'm no prophet here, but I think it's just kind of common sense uh, that the world is on the verge of revolution, that there are some serious th things going on. And we need to know the one who has the key in a certain sense to all of these treasures. And that's St. Joseph. St. Peter Julian Imard, we started with him, remember, at the very beginning of our 33 days. We started with him. I'm going to end with two quotes from him before we go into praying the litany of St. Joseph and then doing a short reading for consecration and then doing the consecration. St. Peter Julian Imard says, Devotion to St. Joseph is one of the choicest graces that God can give to a soul, for it is tantamount to revealing the entire treasury of our Lord's graces. See, the saints know this. The saints know this. They tapped into this. This is what, what is going to help us to become saints. If we tap into the source, if we tap, tap, tap into the one who's got this extraordinary ability to intercede for us before the throne of God, because he's sitting right next to God in the kingdom of heaven, you know? So this, oh man, this, this stuff is awesome. St. Joseph is your increaser. Remember, we learned at the beginning, Joseph, the name Joseph means increase. St. Joseph is the increaser. He will increase in you grace, virtue, holiness. That's the whole purpose of this consecration, so that you can be more conformed, more pleasing to Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. That's what your spiritual father wants for you. He wants you to become a saint. So that you can sit next to Jesus Christ in his kingdom. You'll be further down the line. You're not going to be the one like James and John tried to get. You know, the key seats on the right and right on the left. But those are reserved for, for them. Rightly so. That was They were predestined for that. They were set aside for that role. And, and, and praise God for that. Because it's, it's thanks to that for Our Lady and St. Joseph. That, that, you know, we can also have a place there. So, okay, if you're number whatever, down on the left or down on the right side, who cares? You're there, right? I don't care if I'm in the back corner sweeping up, you know, I don't, I just want to be there. And St. Joseph will help us to be there. So here's another quote from St. Peter Julian Imard. Joseph is an all-powerful intercessor. We must then be devoted to him. We must honor him and consecrate ourselves to him. In that way, we shall greatly please Jesus and Mary, who consider as done for themselves what is done for Joseph. Isn't that awesome? You know, just like I made that case some time ago that, you know, if, if you were hanging out with me and you gave my mother roses, it's as though you gave those roses to me. If you honor my mother, it please it will please my heart. You sing songs to my mother, you make a wreath out of flowers and crown my mother. You got, what do you want from me? I'll give it to you. Same thing with my father. If you do something nice for my father, if you praise my father, sing a song about my father, I'm at your disposal. What is it you want? I'll give it to you. Well, here we're talking about Jesus Christ. If you do great things to honor his father, who's also your spiritual father, my friends, you are going to be blessed. You are going to be blessed in the spiritual life. That's what the saints knew. And now you know it. And now you know it. So we're going to, the order here that we follow, we're going to pray the litany of St. Joseph now. So normally we pray that at the end. So we're going to pray the litany. And today we do it in English because yesterday we did it in Latin. And then we're going to read this small section on consecration. And we're going to do a consecration together. So let's go to page 233 for the litany of St. Joseph. And by the way, keep this up. Right. Even though, you know, I, I, I certainly don't expect you to just constantly be reading this thing every day. I don't think it would be a bad idea. But uh, make the litany of St. Joseph part of your prayer life. Why not continue to pray it every day? But I'm jumping ahead. I'm going to go through those things tomorrow about, you know, practices that you can continue to do 
to keep this relationship going. Okay, so let's pray the Litany of St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us, Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste Guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous Defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Most Just, pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste, pray for us. Joseph Most Prudent, pray for us. Joseph Most Courageous, pray for us. Joseph Most Obedient, pray for us. Joseph Most Faithful, pray for us. Mirror of Patience, pray for us. Lover of Poverty, pray for us. Model of Workmen, pray for us. Glory of Domestic Life, pray for us. Guardian of Virgins, pray for us. Pillar of Families, pray for us. Comfort of the Afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the Sick, pray for us. Patron of the Dying, pray for us. Terror of Demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, my friend, so let's go back. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to read uh, and just make a few comments on the consecration day. So that's on page 79. It's page 79. You made it. Today you are going to consecrate yourself entirely to St. Joseph. A comprehensive program of consecration to St. Joseph has been long in the making. It has taken centuries for the secret weapon of consecration to St. Joseph to develop. It is now revealed, and you have been chosen by God to be the recipient of a tremendous blessing in the spiritual life. You have been selected at this time in history to be a part of consecration to St. Joseph. Do you know how blessed you are? In days of old, saints would have been delighted by a comprehensive method of preparation and consecration to St. Joseph. Their saintly instincts knew of the greatness and wonders of St. Joseph, and each one in their own way sought to honor him and love him with a filial devotion. But it is you who will be ranked among the very first in the history of the church to live in a tremendous era of devotion to St. Joseph, the era of St. Joseph. I'm not kidding. Are you not seeing it? I'm, I've been seeing it. Since this book came out, there has been an explosion of St. Joseph in the church. He's everywhere I look now constantly. Some of the pictures are still old, and I'm like, all right, they obviously didn't read the book, but he's everywhere now, and I pray that this continues to increase, because I believe it is the will of God. The Holy Trinity wants St. Joseph to be more known and loved. You have been invited to imitate the virtues and holiness of St. Joseph's pure heart. With St. Joseph at your side, virtue and holiness will increase in your life. With St. Joseph's paternal cloak over you, you will be protected from spiritual harm. Fear nothing, my friend. Your spiritual father is the father of Jesus, the husband of the mother of God, and the terror of demons. For the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, those who honor their father atone for sins. In word and, uh, in word and deed, honor your father, that all blessings may come to you. My friends, for the rest of your life, love, 
trust, and honor St. Joseph. Go to him in times of plenty, in times of poverty, in good times, and in bad. He will be your guardian, your strength, and your certainty of not being lost. If you become weary, go to Joseph. If you become anxious, go to Joseph. When you are alone, mourning, tempted, run to St. Joseph. He will never be far from you. He will hear your voice and be your quick defense. A fearless warrior, your spiritual father will rush to your side and protect you. St. Joseph Sebastian Palchar, that holy Polish bishop, said, God demands much from you, but he will favor you generously on this earth and will exalt you if you will but imitate St. Joseph and his virtues. We've been saying that all along. Never forget what you have learned in these days of preparation, my friends. Renew your consecration frequently. Strive to please the loving heart of your spiritual father. Avoid sin and live as a faithful member of the church. Should scandals persist, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. They will never disappoint you. They will never abandon you. They will always love you and be with you. A last quote from St. Peter Giuliani Mard. I have prayed to our Lord that he might give me St. Joseph for a father, and as he had given me Mary for a mother that he might put in my heart that devotion, that confidence, that filial love of a client, of a devotee of St. Joseph. I trust the good master has heard my prayers, for I now feel greater devotion to this great saint, and I am full of confidence and hope. Oh, my friends, bring it on. Whatever the world throws at me, bring it on. I'm ready. If God is for me, if I have, have Jesus, Mary, and Joseph with me, bring it on. Bring it on. My friends, we've been so blessed to do this together. It's been an honor for me to be with you during these days. It really and truly has. As I said, I probably won't get an opportunity to do this again unless there's a major persecution, which there probably will be. And I'll be hiding out, you know, in an underground, you know, bunker uh, in an, you know, a priest of, of the underground church. Those days could happen. So we'll see. We'll see. But now's the time. Now's the time for our, our active, formal act of consecration to St. Joseph. Now, in the book, there are many that we could do. I wrote some. There's some from saints, some that I just found. I don't know who the author was. The one that I thought that we would do together today is the one by St. Peter Julian Emard, because he's probably the most quote quoted saint in the book. And he's a saint. I'm not. So let's read his. Now, what I can do, for those of you who have the book, you can read it with me. But I know many people don't have the book. So I'm going to read just a few words, maybe like five or six words or so at a time. I'll pause briefly, and you can recite it wherever you are around the world. Uh, you just recite what I say. I won't read a long passage, so don't worry. I, you don't have to memorize like a whole sentence. That's, I think, a good way to do it for us, okay? So this is on page 237 of the hard copy book. In the E version, I don't know what page that is, but it's the Act of Consecration of St. Joseph by St. Peter Julian Emard. So if you want to just take a second and try and find that, if you have like the, the Kindle version in front of you or something, try and find that one. Or just listen to me as I read it, and wherever you are, you can repeat after me, okay? Here we go, my friends. It's going to get real right now. We're going to give ourselves entirely to St. Joseph. Let's do this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I consecrate myself to you, good St. Joseph, as my spiritual father. I choose you to rule my soul and to teach me the interior life the life hidden away with Jesus, Mary, and yourself. Above all, I want to imitate the humble silence with which you shrouded Jesus and Mary. For me, everything lies in that self-abnegation like our Lord in his hidden life. 
making the world forget me by my silence and my practice of virtue. I consecrate myself to you as my guide and model in all my duties so that I may learn to fulfill them with meekness and humility, with meekness toward my brethren, my neighbor, and all with whom I come in contact, with humility toward myself and simplicity before God. I choose you, good saint, as my counselor, my confidant, my protector in all my difficulties and trials. I do not ask to be spared crosses and sufferings, but only from self-love, which might take away their value by making me vain about them. I choose you as my protector. Be my father, as you were the father of the Holy Family at Nazareth. Be my guide, be my protector. I do not ask for temporal goods, greatness, or power. I ask only that I serve with fidelity and devotedness, my divine King. I shall honor, love, and serve you with Mary, my mother, and never shall I separate her name from yours. O oh, Jesus, give me Joseph for a father, as you have given me Mary as a mother. Fill me with devotion, confidence, and filial love. Listen to my prayer. I know that you will. Already I feel more devout, more full of hope and confidence in good Saint Joseph, your foster father and my spiritual father. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, do you feel it? He's yours, and you're his. This bond, you just sealed it. You have given everything to the great Saint Joseph. My friends, your life is not going to be the same. It's not going to be. You, of your own will, have desired this relationship with him, and he is never going to take his eye off of you. He's going to be close to you. In good times and in bad, sickness and health, all of that, he's yours, and you're his. My friends, let's pray for one another because to be, can you imagine what it's going to be like in heaven when we see him face to face, when we finally see the face of Joseph, of Mary, and of our sweet Jesus. Oh, what a day it's going to be. What a glorious day, my friends. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you guys. I'm so happy for you as a priest, as, as your brother in this together with you as the author of the book. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Really, this is just praise God. Praise God. So today's our last day officially with the consecration. But I would please ask you, please join me tomorrow because I'm going to have some good follow up stuff, some some suggestions for things that you can do to keep the fire going. Don't let it burn out, my friends. That's the last thing you want to do. Don't let it burn out. And I would like to give you a blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all of the viewers uh, for their intentions, for their families, for marriages, for their children, grandchildren. Hear their prayers. Answer them according to your most holy will, especially to the powerful intercession of St. Joseph, the Lord and Prince of all the treasures of heaven. Be attentive to their needs. Give them the cloak of St. Joseph. Give him his paternal heart so that they can imitate him, acquire his virtues, and become holy. 
And my friends, may Almighty God bless you, your families, and especially for the conversion of those loved ones. The blessing of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, Ite ad Yosef. Go to Joseph.